Coming up this week on IT. Microsoft's Panas Panay reveals what the future of Windows might look like at this year's CES. So I look at how artificial intelligence might affect the rollout of Windows 12 and how it will affect those with old hardware. So in case you missed it at last week's CES, Panas Panay, who's the chief product officer for Windows at Microsoft, came on stage with the chair and CEO of AMD, Lisa Su, and they discussed how innovations in AMD's new line up of hardware is going to be paired with new functionality coming to Windows. Now, of course, some of this functionality already exists in Windows today if you have the right hardware, but of course, Microsoft is developing this to better utilize new hardware that's going to be coming onto the market this year and next year. So Sue asked Panos if he could reveal any exclusive information about what might be coming up in Windows. Now, they joked around a little bit about this because, of course, Panos said, well, that's only only the kind of stuff that we usually discuss behind closed doors in offices. But he did say that artificial intelligence is going to change literally the way you do everything in Windows. And of course, that you know is quite telling because if Windows 11 was really about, at least from Microsoft's point of view, improving the security standpoint of devices by enabling features that already existed in Windows 10 and requiring a certain level of hardware, Windows Windows 12 is going to be all about artificial intelligence. Now, of course, I don't think that it's only going to be about artificial intelligence, but this is going to be one of the key feature sets coming to Windows 12 and something that Microsoft hopes is going to be switched on for as many devices as possible. Now, just before I move on, I just want to summarize a little bit more about what Panos said. Now, he's saying that we're going to see artificial intelligence workloads on devices on a scale that we've never seen before. And of course, that's going to be enabled by hardware that already exists for ARM processors. It's coming to the 13th generation of Intel chipsets and is coming to the Ryzen 740, which should be available in devices, I believe, starting March this year year. And all of this stuff going on with artificial intelligence, of course, a lot more of the processing is actually going to happen on your local device. But there are still things that are going to have to happen in the cloud just because they require much more processing power. And Panos made the point that this is going to require an operating system that can blur the lines between the edge and the cloud, so the edge being your device and the cloud, in order to make those things happen. Now, it's not just about your own personal PC, of course. This is also about, you know, the Internet of Things things, devices being placed in factories so that they can use artificial intelligence, processing things quickly where data is needed quickly at the edge in the factory itself, and maybe the rest of those operations happening in the cloud. And this requires an operating system that can work with cloud technologies to make those things happen seamlessly. And of course, on an end user device, it's even more important that that is a seamless experience for the end user. And as Panos quite rightly pointed out, that's going to require having the right hardware in the right place. Now, I think Apple here is a case in point. They've shown how tight integration between hardware and software can really help to provide a great user experience. Now, unfortunately, Windows doesn't quite have that luxury of being able to so tightly integrate OS and hardware. And I think you know, this is an attempt by Microsoft with Windows 11 and in the future with Windows 12 to try and tighten up those hardware requirements so that the company can bring meaningful new features features to users and ensure a great user experience. And of course, current CPUs, Intel and AMD CPUs, don't have those neural processing units, MPUs, available to be able to do that AI locally. So when you do things like switch on a background blur in a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting, for instance, because there's no dedicated MPU on most Windows devices today, it will just drain your battery like there's no tomorrow. You could be without a working notebook very quickly. I was recently doing a live webinar with somebody and they turned on the background blur in the conferencing software that we use. It's not Zoom, it's not Teams. And it caused such a big problem for the computer that it basically just crashed and they had to restart it because so much processing power was required to actually process the background that the CPU just got its knickers in a twist and it couldn't really cope anymore. So these things today on Windows hardware are problematic. And of course, that's just one example. There are a whole load of other things that AI can do and you can potentially benefit 
benefit from. So not only are we looking at better collaboration experiences with things like Windows Studio effects, which does things like processing that background blur, uh, auto framing and eye contact and all those really cool things that are able to help you get a better connection with the person that you're speaking to. If you've got an MPU in your device, Windows Studio effects is able to do all of those things at the same time and have a very negligible effect on performance. So those effects might take up something like 100 milliwatts of power. So they're not really having any kind of dramatic effect on your battery like they might be with Windows hardware today. Other things like automated security monitoring, better gaming performance, and all those really cool tools for creators, like the ability to track things in video and to uh, bend objects and warp them around objects in real time. All of those things are possible today, but without a dedicated neural processing engine, they really, really tax the CPU. So in order for Windows to move on and to enable all of those things within the operating system, and of course for the third party software that runs on Windows, the hardware is also going to have to move forwards. So what does that mean for Windows 12? Now, of course, Windows 12, you know, the main new features may be artificial intelligence related. That's what Panos seems to be suggesting in his speech. But there's also going to be changes to the UI, of course. Now, there was a leaked screenshot that was accidentally shown on a slide deck during Ignite, uh, I believe it was, and it shows some evolutions to what we see in Windows 11 today. Now, I believe that Microsoft is going to push forwards with those changes, but it's going to hold them back for Windows 12. Now, partly because, you know, if there's going to be a new version of Windows in probably 2024, there has to be some visual differentiator. It has to look different. The UI has to be different in order to sell it to end users because people just expect it to look different. And the artificial intelligence features will come on top of that. So this will all be powered by, well, what can already happen with ARM chipsets today. And if you remember Project Volterra, Microsoft was getting that out to developers so they can start actually uh, harnessing some of the power of these MPUs that come as part of that device. And we should hopefully see those things coming with the 13th uh, generation set of Intel chipsets for their mobile and their desktop processors. And AMD is already preparing to release chipsets with MPUs this year. So Microsoft Microsoft, of course, is working with Intel and AMD to make sure that technology is there in place, ready for the release of Windows 12 in 2024. So what does all this mean? Does it mean there's going to be another set of really difficult hardware requirements for Windows 12? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Of course, at this stage, we don't know. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft do it a little bit differently with Windows 12. Of course, new devices that are going to be shipped with Windows 12 is not really going to be an issue. I think that Microsoft will probably set the bar and say, well, all new Windows 12 devices must come with an MPU to enable these features. But in terms of upgrading old devices, it could be that Microsoft says, well, okay, here's a new set of hardware requirements. Maybe they're not that much different from Windows 11, but if you don't have an MPU, then of course you either lose all the access to those artificial intelligence features or they run, but very slowly. It'll be interesting to see how Microsoft handles it. So the upgrade to Windows 12, you know, assuming this thing exists, we believe it does exist and it's gonna be marketed as such as a new version of Windows will probably require you to upgrade your hardware, you know, even if it's relatively new, to be able to harness the power of AI. Maybe not, but I have a feeling that that is likely to be the case. Or as I said, maybe you'll be able to use all of this stuff, but it's going to be a poor user experience because your CPU, your GPU are going to be so taxed. It's going to require you know, a lot of power. And if you're on battery, it's just going to drain it very quickly. So obviously that's not the greatest. Now, I just believe that Microsoft is probably doing the right thing here. I believe they did the right thing with Windows 11, although it was an extremely unpopular move. You can't please everybody. It's about time that every device had a TPM and then that TPM was enabled in order to provide all of these security features that Microsoft has been working so hard on with Windows 10 and is now trying to enable uh, by default with more and more Windows 11 devices. I think that's just the right thing to do. You know, it's 
important that you're secure. And if you're not secure, who is the first person you're going to blame? Well, Microsoft, of course. So we need to just accept the fact that the hardware is also important. Now, I know there were some other limitations with Windows 11, like, you know, you need to have an eighth generation uh, Intel chipset or equivalent in order to get the performance that Microsoft wants you to experience with Windows 11. Now, I know that people have argued, well, you can get the same performance with a seventh generation Intel chipset. Now, I don't know. I haven't done the testing. This is what Microsoft has determined. I know that some people think that this is Microsoft trying to force us into upgrading, something they're doing in collusion with their hardware partners to force us to upgrade. Now, I know this is all very unpopular, you know, with a, with a certain set of people, but I do think it's really important for Microsoft to somehow get tighter integration with the hardware to move everybody forwards. And, you know, I'm not for wasting old hardware. You know, I understand about the environment and that we shouldn't be chucking away machines and devices that are perfectly usable. But, you know, it's a difficult thing to balance. You've got to find a balance between supporting old hardware and enabling features to move everybody forwards. And at the end of the day, if you don't like it, at least for the time being, Microsoft is giving you a choice. You can stay on Windows 10. And if you don't like that, then of course you could switch to Linux or, you know, even to Mac OS if you decided to do that. So that's what's happening potentially with Windows 12, artificial intelligence, and how that's all going to combine together with new hardware that we're all going to probably have to go out and buy within the next few years if we really want to experience all those cool new features with the performance that we expect at the same time. But you know, it's something that's going to develop over many years. So no rush just to ditch your latest notebook or PC right at the moment. If you found this video valuable, then I'd really appreciate it if you give it a like. And if you'd like to see more like this from the Petri IT knowledge base, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. I'll leave you with another video that you might find interesting on the screen now about Project Volterra and how the ARM chip in that device and the MPU that comes with it is going to help developers harness the power of AI to develop new applications and of course improve existing ones. But that's it for me for this week and I'll see you next time.